Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. And no matter how far away you roam, if you want to be happy in a million ways, for the holidays you can't beat home, sweet home. I know a man who lives in Tennessee, and he is heading for Pennsylvania and some homemade pumpkin pie. From Pennsylvania folks are traveling down to Dixie's southern shores. From Atlantic to Pacific, gee, the traffic is horrific. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays. And no matter how far away you if you want to be happy in a million ways, for the holidays you can't be home sweet home. Well, there you have it. I, my favorite version of that song was sung by the crooner uh, Perry Como, and uh, I still have a vinyl record of him somewhere with that song on it, but I've uh, since transferred it to a disc, or well, probably to cassette tape and then disc, and now I uh, probably have it on MP3. But it's one of my favorites. And the reason I sang that was too, one is uh, U.S. Thanksgiving is coming up shortly. And the other is today we are making pumpkin pie cookies. So let's get to it, shall we? We're going to start with our dry ingredients. Switch more here. And our first dry ingredient is two cups of white flour. Somebody's going to say that's a liquid measuring cup. And you're absolutely right. This is a me liquid measuring cup. But I didn't measure with my dry measuring cup the two cups and put them in here because I had other things to measure. Our next dry ingredient is a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then we want one teaspoon of baking powder. And one teaspoon of baking soda. and one teaspoon of cinnamon. And that's it for the dry ingredients. We're just going to blend those all together. You just want to do it, it'll end up looking kind of a beige color. If you get it well blended, you won't be able to see any dark spots from the cinnamon. Just, you know, take your time, make sure it's all mixed together. You don't want to have lumps and bumps of uh, different things. I remember years ago watching a movie called Carry On Cruising. If you've never seen the Carry On movies, it's uh, worth looking them up and watching. They're British comedy at, at its finest. But anyway, at the end of the cruise, the captain is retiring, so the crew decide to make him a special celebration cake and put in flavors from all the different countries they visited. And so as he's eating the cake, he stops and he goes, hurry? Different, different flavors as they come out in the cake. But uh, anyway, we'll get on with our cooking. So once you've got those blended, set them aside. And we're going to mix together our wet slash moist ingredients. And the first one is going to be one cup of applesauce. Now I'm using unsweetened. If you use sweetened applesauce, you might want to disregard one of the other ingredients, which we'll get to in a moment. One cup of applesauce, one wasted applesauce, and you're going to want one cup of pumpkin pie filling. Now, I'm using this, it's already seasoned and sweetened. Um, if you want to make your own pumpkin pie filling ahead of time, you can do that. I'm actually cheating, I'm using Mr. Smith's pumpkin pie filling. I think it's E.D. Smith, if I remember rightly, but I'm not positive. But anyway, pumpkin pie filling, one cup. You're going to go, well, if he's using pumpkin pie filling, why did he add a teaspoon of cinnamon in the dry ingredients? Well, just to give him that little extra bite. If you don't like the extra bite, you can leave the uh, extra cinnamon out. But I like my cookies to have a little zing to them. Kind of like ginger snaps, right? Have that little extra zap. There we go. Let's try and get some of that off. 
off of there. Yeah, I know I'm persnickety, aren't I? Just try and get every last little, every last little bit. Then we're going to want two eggs beaten. Take out your frustrations on those eggs. Beat them good. Doesn't matter how how beaten they are, whether they're lightly beaten or heavily beaten or whipped to a shred. They just have to be pre-beaten. And we want a quarter cup of brown sugar Splenda. Now, if you're not using Splenda, the brown sugar Splenda, you will want a half cup of regular brown sugar. But brown sugar Splenda is far sweeter than regular brown sugar. So quarter cup of brown sugar spun. And our last ingredient, I've got my teaspoon here. So I'm just going to, we're going to do a dash. It's one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Here we go. And then we're going to take a fork. Now you could do this in a mix master if you wanted to. As you know from previous videos, I like to get in there and try to keep these muscles, you know. Get in there with my fork and uh, whip this up. There we go. Well, if you're wondering, what does he do with his spare time when he's not in the kitchen or when he's not telling stories? Well, I have. Some of the different things I do, but one of them, my wife and I both do, is being an extra in movies and TV shows. Now, there used to be a lot more TV and movies filmed here in uh, Regina than there are now, but uh, they're starting to get back in here now. If you want to try and see me in action, if you go on to Reels TV, that's R-E-E-L-Z, you'll find a series on there called I Lived With a Killer, and I'm in three episodes of that. So you can check that out if you want to see my mug elsewhere. I've played a landlord, I've played a police detective with the Denver police, and uh, a news reporter. And, uh, I can't remember where that was, where I was, where I was for that was supposed to be. This weekend, my wife and I are going to be in the filming for a new movie that will be out next year called The Cage Fighter. And uh, whether you'll be able to see us, I don't know, because like, we're just extras in the crowd. So. <laughs> but if you keep an eye open, you never know. You might just spot us in there. All right. Now we're going to start blending our dry ingredients and our wet ingredients together. It's, it works better that way. If you don't mix them together, you just sort of end up with a bunch of dry and a bunch of muck. But we're going to mix our wet and dry ingredients together to make our cookie dough. Now... I would have put at the beginning of the video, or have put at the beginning of the video, that if you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. What that is Celsius, I do not know. So if you have a stove that's in Celsius, you'll have to Google yourself a, uh, a what do you call it? I should say translator, that's not what I want. Converter to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, but 350 Fahrenheit. I have done that today. I have a few, in a few videos I've forgotten to do that, so I've had to wait around while the oven gets up the temperature after I've made my cookie dough. Now the other thing I haven't done yet, which I should have done beforehand, was I'm going to use parchment paper. Under these, if you don't want to use parchment paper, you will have to grease your cookie sheets. Because these will stick. this all nice and mixed together. I'll make sure it's well mixed. If you ever eaten a cookie or, or a muffin or something, you've got a clump of flour. I had that happen to me once. It was, 
it was not a pleasant experience to suddenly have this mouthful of dry powder with not really any flavor to it because flour doesn't have much of a flavor. So you want to make sure you get your ingredients well blended together with no lumps. It can turn out to be little surprise bombs in somebody's mouth. going to form not really a dough, but kind of a, a thick how to describe it. A thick batter, I guess is the best way to describe it, because that's what it is, it's a thick batter. There we go. Alrighty, now I gotta get my sheets ready, so I'll be back in half a second. Sheets ready, and we are going to put our cookies onto the thing. So, you want a tablespoon or soup spoon, and you're going to put drops of cookie dough or cookie batter onto your, onto your parchment paper. How big you want to make the cookies, that's totally up to you. I try and get 12 on a sheet if I can. And this will make somewhere between 24 and 30 cookies, depending on size, of course. I think some cookie recipes, they must like really, really small cookies because they'll say, fix four dozen. And I'm lucky if I get, you know, if I get 30 cookies out of it, let alone 48. So it's uh, all a matter of personal preference and size, I guess. So we're going to do another 12 cookies on this sheet. As long as you wash your hands, don't be afraid to get in there with your finger as a spatula if you have to. And if you're single and don't have to worry about anybody else, then I guess it doesn't matter if you wash your hands or not. You're only eating your own stuff. So. <laughs> but I like to be clean in the kitchen. So. If you heard about the recent discovery, for centuries we believed that the shortest man in the Christian Bible was Nehemiah. Maya. But recent studies have unveiled that actually he was the second shortest man. The shortest man in the Bible was Bildad, the Shuhite. So there you go. <laughs> That's what you call bad puns. baking, he's ready to go in, and we'll be back as soon as they come out, and we'll have a look at them. Until then, stand by. Well, we're back. There's 30 seconds left on the clock, and we'll see how our cookies are turning out. All right. The countdown is at 19 seconds. A meadow man who lived in Tennessee, he was heading for Pennsylvania and some homemade pumpkin. 
Pennsylvania folks are traveling down the Dixie's sunny shore. From Atlantic to Pacific, Jesus Christ is terrific. Look at those, yeah. Put our next tray in the oven. Set our timer for 10 minutes. And there we go. Well, let's get these off the, off the sheet and onto the cooling tray. Give you a nice photograph of them at the end. All these, these are going to be so good with a cup of coffee or a cup of tea. And they're so easy to make. If you're able to burn water, which is quite the trick, you should be able to make these cookies because they're simple. So don't say, oh, I'm no good in the kitchen. Get out there, give it a try. Remember, practice makes perfect, and if you convince yourself you can't cook, and never give yourself the extra time or keep trying, you never will be able to cook. But keep trying. Yeah, you're going to have some failures. I'm not going to say that every recipe I try or try and come up with is going to be perfect. Uh, there's been a few things of mine that have gone in the garbage because they look good on paper when I wrote them out, but it didn't taste a lot when I made them. So there you go. Just like sometimes you'll see a recipe and you read the ingredients and you go, ugh. And yet they taste wonderful. <laughs> so you never know with the cookie recipes. But that's our recipe for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And we'll give it a try. Because uh, if you don't, you're missing out on some really luscious cookies. Bring this one over here so you can see. Look at that. We'll break it open. Oh, yeah, look at that. Nice. See the steam coming off. It's a little hot to eat yet. I'll let mine cool a bit before I eat that one. I'll set it over here. But yeah, give this recipe a try. Don't worry about burning water. Make yourself some nice cookies. And uh, until Friday when we have our shout outs and our story and rumor of the week, take care, stay safe, and God bless. Oh, and by the way, Cousin Ralph says hi. He'll be back with us for another story sometime in December, so you can look forward to that. Alrighty, my friends, that's it for today. And keep your kitchens clean, wash your hands, and enjoy your cookies.